This week, we're revealing a new Timothy Zahn novel. Plus, Pablo Hidalgo reveals a great moment in Star Wars history, and I sit down with Myrna Velasco from Star Wars Resistance. What a cool episode. That's why I wore a coat. Shout out to all the dads watching. This is the Star Wars Show. From the Lucasfilm headquarters in San Francisco, here's your hosts, Andy and Anthony. Hello, and welcome to the Star Wars Show, the only Star Wars show hosted by two people in identical outfits. You know, this is kind of strange. Should one of us go change? Why would we ever change out of matching giant winter coats? Yeah, okay, good point. Let's go to the news. The title and cover for the latest novel in Timothy Zahn's new Thrawn series has been revealed. Entitled Star Wars Thrawn Treason, the new novel picks up with Thrawn's TIE Defender program being halted in favor of Director Krennic's secret Death Star project. But when Thrawn receives a dire warning about his homeworld, Thrawn must choose between his duty to the Chiss Ascendancy or fealty to the Empire he is sworn to serve, even if the choice means committing treason. Thrawn Treason will be available for pre-order next week and will arrive in summer 2019. And for more on Thrawn Treason, check out StarWars.com SWS. While we're on the subject of Star Wars books, a plethora of Star Wars authors have been announced for Star Wars Celebration. E.K. Johnston, author of Star Wars Ahsoka, will join Star Wars Lando's Luck author Justina Ireland and Star Wars from a certain point of view contributor Zoraida Cordova on the stage at Star Wars Celebration Chicago. The three new authors joined the previously announced lineup including Timothy Zahn, Delilah Dawson, Claudia Gray, Katie Cook, Alexander Freed, Kevin Scott, and Jeffrey Brown. Tickets for Star Wars Celebration are almost completely sold out, so get over to StarWarsCelebration.com to make sure you don't miss out on this incredible event. Yeah, Star Wars Celebration is five days this year, and it might not be enough time for all the stuff that we have cooking. You do not want to miss out. You know what I love most about Celebration? What's that? All the Star Wars cosplay. What a wonderfully crafted segue into our next segment. Please enjoy one of the greatest moments in Star Wars cosplay history. Good evening, I'm Pablo Hidalgo. For decades, humankind has dressed up as their favorite Star Wars characters, but no Star Wars cosplayer burst through the walls of creativity quite like this. The year was 1993. The place, WCW's Clash of the Champions 24. Sting and Davy Boy Smith teased a mystery combatant for their feud with Sid Vicious, Harlem Heat, and Vader. No relation to Star Wars. After a heated exchange with Sid Vicious, Sting uttered a statement that would forever change the course of Star Wars cosplay. The Shaq Master! Right. The Shaq Master! <laughs> I told you. With that tumble, a legend was born. Donning a glitter-encrusted Stormtrooper helmet, acid-washed jeans, and some sort of fur vest coat hybrid, the Sharkmaster was elevated from fumbling brute to legendary titan, earning a coveted place in Star Wars cosplay history. The costume is not only elegant, but economical and durable. So here's to you, Sharkmaster, for inspiring and shocking the Star Wars cosplay community for generations to come. Until next time, I'm Pablo Hidalgo saying good night. Overjoyed to be sitting down right now with Tora Doza herself, Myrna Velasco. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Anthony. Tora immediately enters fully on brand and is just fully on <laughs> brand for the rest of the series, I and I love it. Oh yeah, isn't that <laughs> awesome? She's a little racer. She's got her whole garb on. I loved her boots. Can I just talk about her boots for a second? <laughs> I feel like Star Wars is 50% boots and jackets. I agree. I absolutely <laughs> agree. <laughs> and it really makes the outfit though, must I say. She has an astromech that's like branded for her. Mm -hmm. The blue ace is entirely custom for her, mm -hmm. and it's all just color coordinated and perfect. I strive to be as coordinated as Tora. <laughs> right, Tora feels to me like one of those kids you know as a teenager who seems like she was handed everything and you want to hate her. Yeah, but she's so nice and you're like, look, can I just like, you have a misplaced hair. How about that? How about that? <laughs> yeah. And you'll have to live with that for yeah. the rest of your life, Tora yeah. Doza. And she's like, well, I brought you a smoothie. And you're like, 
okay, right. all right. What I love about the relationship between her and Kaz is Kaz is really looking for a rival. That's his personality. Yeah. And Tor's just like, no, I'm just very good at everything. Let's see how this turns yeah, out. Yeah, she is good at everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna just credit a little bit just to be like, no, she's human, but no, she is really good at everything. She and really... it is very frustrating to play someone so on point. Is it? It is, because I'm always like, uh, gotta second guess myself, what's going <laughs> on here? And she doesn't have that in her, and that's the best part about playing a girl who is confident, on the edge of cocky, but mm -hmm. is so helpful. I also think she really believes in like a team atmosphere, and she's only as good as everyone else around her. That's like the most beautiful part about Tora, is that she just is willing to prop everybody else up as well. I heard that you are a Star Wars fan, but, but like the only Star Wars fan in your family? Yeah. <laughs> well, not so much anymore. I was like the first Star Wars fan of my family. Okay. I'm very nerdy in real life and I love Star Wars and I love Dragon Ball Z and Harry Potter and my brother and sister, we all always had like this, no, we have to be individual from each other. There's no way we can like the same things as each other. It's so interesting because is, you especially hear about like, oh, my, my parents took me to the movies yeah, and we were all no, very excited about it. And it's no. like, no, I had to bring my yeah, family to Star Wars. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, not the best choices as a 12 year old to be like, parents, we're going to go watch episode one. But I was the one that was like, I need to know about Darth yeah. Vader. I need to know about these things. And these were the only ways I could force my parents to do things for me. <laughs> so, I, but now that you are a part of it, are yeah. they getting more and more into it? Were they as excited as you were when oh, you got cast? Like, yes, they're more into it now than even I am. Like, my dad's calling me and he's like, Mirna, what's going to happen next? I'm like, I can't tell you that stuff because my dad is like a real life Captain Dozo, which is kind of awesome. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, like big mustache, thick accent, everything. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Cause when I first saw Captain Dozo, I was like, this is this is very unusual. <laughs> that is just my dad. You're there. like, <laughs> I feel a little too properly yeah, cast. Yeah, this is exactly. strange. It's like, oh, how did they know that was my dad? That's great. So how does yeah. it feel growing up as a Star Wars fan to be a part of this, to be sitting down at the table with this entire cast and these creators? One of my best friends told me the other day, like, you are canonized and I am the proudest I could ever be of you. And I like started crying because <laughs> we grew up in like the playground being like, no, I'm to be Princess Leia today. No, I'm gonna be Princess Leia. Okay, fine. I'll be Girl Han. Girl Han. Girl Han. Yeah. It's a real thing that we have to deal with. Which Tora is pretty close to Girl Han. Not gonna lie. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you had a teen Girl Han, I feel like Tora would be pretty yeah. close. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. Well, excellent. Myrna, thank, thank you so you. much for being here. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to hang out and chat. <laughs> now that I'm finally seeing you without the news podium blocking you, I've got to say, I think we nailed that size. You kind of look like a kid who made a wish to be an adult. <laughs> Dude, it's the hot new style this season. <laughs> yeah, it's the, I went to the Midwest to visit my parents and forgot a coat, so I had to borrow my dad's. Yeah, it's dad chic, it's all a rage. What you can't see right now because of the camera angle are my sweet orthopedic shoes. What's weird about them is they're giving her four inches of height. It's fashion, Anthony. <laughs> Read a book. And with that, I'm closing the show. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and may the force be with you. Stealth mode. Even more stealth mode. Oh. <gasps> Where'd Andy go? This is very good for, for being able to see when I'm snowboarding. Yep, this is the best part. It gets down to 71 here in the office. <laughs> yeah. You know? And you really just and gotta bundle like, up. Woo! Thank <laughs> you.